How's it going YouTube? It's APOC and welcome to my first effect house tutorial. We're going to be showing you how to make a smooth follow effect like this. So you can see the cube and the sphere are smoothly following my head. I'm going to show you how to make a single object that's going to be tracked by them and then you can add in all your other objects underneath of that. So you only have to do one little position set here. All right, so let's start with a new project. All right, starting with a new project, we're gonna be using this update node in the visual scripting, so don't lose that. Your start one down here, you can push that out of the way for now. Also, I'm sorry, my face might be a little laggy. Unfortunately, this is the Windows beta, so there's gonna be some issues, and one of them is FPS right now. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is add in the head tracking. So choose add object, hover over AR tracking, and choose head tracker. By default, this is going to add in a head occluder. I don't need that. You might need it. So delete or disable it as you wish. I'm just going to disable it for now. And then the second thing we need to do is add in an empty, which is basically just a scene object that has nothing on it, but still has a position in the scene. So you just click on add object and choose create empty at the top. Now this is the object that's going to house. It's going to be a parent object for all of our other objects that we actually want to follow the head. So this is going to be the smoothed out follow position, basically. And then anything underneath of this will follow that position. The reason we do it that way is so we only need to set one object's position instead of a bunch in the visual scripting, because that would just be annoying to set up. Okay, so now we need to get into the visual scripting. So the first thing we need is the head tracker's transform. So click on your head tracker over here. And by the way, make sure your scene object is not underneath the head tracker. Drag and drop it down there if it is. Okay, so first thing I need is the head trackers transform. We're going to click on the head tracker, click on transform and get transform. That will give us a little visual scripting node down here. Just leave that there for now. Next thing we need to do is click on scene object over here underneath transform. Instead of just getting the whole transform, we're only going to get the position values. So we need to click the plus next to position and choose get position and set position put the set position over on the right side of your visual scripting and the get one over on the left next thing we need to do is actually get the world position from the head tracker so all we have is the transform right now click on the output uh, node spot there and just drag and then drop it's going to open up the add a node window already searching for transform basically so you can click on transform and then choose world transform info or add node at the bottom type in world transform info if you don't want to do it that way put that over next to the head trackers transform and then we're going to connect those together the top value of the world transform info is going to be the world position value this scene objects position is a vec3 this one is also a vec3 and the set position is obviously a vec3 as well all the positions are going to be VEC3, which is going to be really important when we add in our next node, which is LERP, L-E-R-P. should be under math and scroll down and look for LERP. And you can read a little bit about it here, but I'm going to explain it to you in a second. You can also type in L-E-R-P. Okay, so you're not going to be able to connect your values to this LERP because it's currently set to number. And like I said, everything's a VEC3 in the positions. So we're going to click on the number here at the top of the LERP, and it should be a drop down. Choose VEC3, and now we'll be able to input our stuff. Okay, so before we set all this up to know which node goes where, I want to kind of explain how a LERP works to you, because you also have a step value here. You're going to want to know what it does. So I made this little diagram here of a graph just to show you real quick. So we have our position one here and we have our second position here. So the step value is how far we want to go between these two. So if our step is 0 0.5, we're going to be right in the middle, right? Which gives us 5, 5 in this case, because that's 10, 10, that's 0, 0. So it's 5, 5 right here in the middle, as you can see. So you can do that with any value 0 to 1. So this is going to be 1, which is our second position, and 0 is just going to give you the first position. So the head is going to be what's moving fast. That means we want that to be our second position because we want the uh, thing that's following the head to be the first position we start at and then move that to the head, not move the head, which is not really possible in this case, but we don't want to put it backwards. It's not going to work. 
All right, so hopefully you understand LERP a little bit more. By the way, that stands for linear interpolation. If you want to look it up more, it's kind of a cool little thing that's very useful for many, many things. So, yep, let's go ahead, get our scene object here, put that into the start, which is our position one in my diagram, and then grab the world position from the world transfer info for the head tracker, put that into the stop. Then the output of this, you're going to put into the set uh, position of your scene object. And then nothing's going to happen because we need to actually be calling the set function on this. And to do that, we want to do it every frame, which is the update event. Just go ahead and drag the arrow from there and connect that up. Right, so now it's going to be setting the position of this object. And I am going to add a 3D object underneath that so you can actually see. So let's add in a sphere. And we're going to drag and drop it right on top so it goes underneath. And now you can see the head or the sphere will follow my head but you can see the step is set to zero so nothing's happening now if we set it to one it's going to follow the head just like it would underneath the head tracker minus the rotation because we're only setting the position of course but there it is so now if you want every frame we only want this sphere to move halfway to where the face went so if i move my head all the way over here i only want it to come to here every frame and then it's going to make it slow because it's doing that every single frame that's kind of where people get confused and it's hard to explain in a good way but hopefully uh, i've helped a little bit so if we set it to 0.3 for instance you can see it's slow so the lower the number the slower it is the higher the number the quicker and more uh, close to the actual head movement it's going to be the highest this will go is one by the way if you do go over one nothing happens. So if you're doing some type of scripting, you get lazy, you're not going to have any <laughs> catastrophic issues. It's just going to default to the second position, anything higher than one, just like going below zero, it's going to default. If you do like negative two here, it's just going to put you at the zero or the first position. So we're going to do like 0 0.6 here. You can see it's pretty fast but it's still a little bit slowed down. If we go all the way down to like 0.01, it's gonna be incredibly slow, but still following me. We go up a little bit, 0.2, it's gonna be quite slow and really smooth. So that's it guys, that's all there is to it. You can just keep adding any scene objects you want to follow the head in the smooth fashion. Underneath your main um, tracked object here, or not tracked object, but like, controlled object so i have the sphere underneath it right now i can just add in an object 3d we'll add in a cube drag that underneath that which i usually do just by dropping it right on the name and you can see the cube is also followed now as well and we can offset it within this so you can put that wherever you want and now everything is being smoothly tracked so i hope you guys enjoyed my first effect house tutorial Sorry again for the camera being a little laggy. Um, let me know if you have any questions or you get stuck on anything. If this updates in the future and doesn't work anymore, drop a comment and I'll try and make a new video or just respond to the comment at least for now um, to update you on how to do it uh, because Effect House is definitely changing a lot as it's still a new software. And this specifically is the Windows beta. Um, so it is what it is. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.